The Big D, WDRC, remembers the way it used to be. You know, every now and then, you know, you go back and you think about some of the greatest voices you can ever recall growing up at the Big D. Certain voices, a certain timbre to their voices. Well, one of the uh, things that we really wanted to do is try to get a hold of Dick McDonough. So the problem was, Dick is... Uh, wait a minute, wait a minute. What? Dick McDonough? Yeah, the prince. No, the prince. The prince. The prince. Yeah, that's so we, we know him as the prince. I used to know him as Dick McDonough. Well, I remember when we had to get him out of the place because they were taking his prince. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry about that. Never mind. All right. Dick Mc... What did you say? Dick McDonough. McDonough? Yeah, McDonough. McDonough. Yeah. Okay. Well, he's from Fitchburg in Massachusetts, and he has that R. Is that right, Richard? That's right. And uh, I did a... I, I, can I tell this story, Dick, about your 30th birthday, surprise birthday party? Sure. Yeah. He doesn't remember you're safe. <laughs> he, doesn't even, he doesn't remember what he well, just said sure to. What I did was uh, his wife called me and said, we want to put a surprise birthday party for, for Dick. And I said, great. So um, I went over to his house. He was teaching at the Connecticut School of Broadcasting. And I saw him go down the elevator. I left at the same time he did. He walked into school. I went in my car and drove to his house. And I'm going through all his personal tapes and, and such. And his He went to the school and you went to his house? House, yes. So then his, his daughter, Shannon, she says, oh, daddy's home. And I just looked at his wife and she looked at me and, and it was like, this can't be. I said, you sure? And sure enough, he comes walking in. Now, knowing Dick had a very busy day that day, and his mind was just spent. And he sees me, and he goes, oh, hey, buddy, how are you? Yeah, hey, great. I said, you're just the guy I want to see. And I said, so I'm looking for a tape I had left here. And I said, maybe this is it. He says, oh, no, this is one of me when I first started out in uh, Fitchburg, Mass. Fitchburg. Oh, and I says, maybe... You know, and yeah, well, so it was yeah, actually Vermont New, or whatever, Newport, Vermont. Yeah, Newport. Yeah, yeah. And then, then he said, "Well, this one was me." Good thing he here, remembers here, <laughs> where this one was. Well, he starts telling me all his tapes, and I just piled them up. Yeah, yeah. And then I saw a tape with my handwriting on it, and I said, "Yeah, Dick, that's the tape I'm looking for." Oh, thank you very much. And, and I says, "Oh, I, I got to go. No, let's have a coffee." We sat down at coffee, and and so what happened was. Dick had the wrong night he was teaching. He was supposed to teach the next night. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, so, so then the next day we came in, We because I used to be Dick's engineer producer. And I said to him, I said, are you, are you actually going to be uh, working tonight at CSB? He goes, oh, yeah, yeah, I'm definitely. I mixed up from last night. I said, not a problem. So I followed him down to the school. I waited until he went into the classroom. Now, we want to, to say teaching. now, but just one second. You know, when people, when he keeps saying, I followed him down to the school, the school because we were in the same building. Same building. The DRC was, was on, on the, the 15th, 15th floor, right? and CSB was on the 6th floor. Yeah, okay. So, so, we, um, so I saw him go in the class. I scooted over his house, saw his wife. I said, hey, I said, I'm here to pick up the tapes. And he had... He actually had them all straightened out for me. And I just tick, took them, and then I went into, into the radio station. And I started working on his, his 30th birthday production. In fact, one day he came in, and I'm in the middle of it. And he comes walking in, and he goes, uh, can I use your phone? And I said to him, no. And he, what do you mean? I says, no, I said, I'm busy here. You know, well, gee, that's a, I says, look, I'm a, I, got, I got tons of work up here, and I'm being, I'm being a real jerk. And he, he, he storms out of the room. I go, well, good, that'll get rid of him for a day or two. <laughs> and then, then he, yeah, then uh, put the whole thing together, and uh, I think I apologized to you. I says, yeah, I said, that was very rude of me to do that. And so, you know. You know, and mm -hmm. so then when we had the uh, the party, uh, Dick kept hearing these things. It was all these early stuff when he was on the air, and he goes, "Where did you get that? How did you get that?" I says, "You gave it to me," and I told him the story. You know, so that was. Uh, but 
You're not 30 anymore, Dick. Uh, you're a couple of months older, aren't you? 76. 76. God bless you. Oh, wow. Wow. 70, wow. Wow. Bob so, Craig is older than I am. He's 78 now. You wanted oh. to make sure you threw that in, didn't you? Bob, oh, you're older than Dick. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, so, where, so where did you start out your radio career? Do you want to start this thing up? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, Dick, we We've had been, started we, that we whole story he told. Yes, yes. That was the first story. So, uh, yes, uh, Dick, where did you start your, uh, your career? Uh, Newport, Vermont, which was five miles away from Canada. I know um, because, I, I, excuse me, Dick, I actually, I never even heard that except for the fact that you said just now Newport. I actually had been in Newport, Vermont when I was riding my motorcycle. You, how did, there was a radio station there? A little tiny one. Wow. Yeah. Uh, on, on a hill looking at the lake. And the lake was 35 miles long. Ooh. Yeah. And how long yeah. did you work there? I was there for a summer in between going back, uh, oh, back uh, to school to Boston. Boston, okay. And yeah. then, then where did you go and trek off to? Well, then I, I, well, I worked part-time when I was in, in Boston. I worked in Gardner, Mass oh. on Sundays. Yeah. And, uh, and then what? Where did I go? I don't know. Yeah. The career, I've had so many... I need a map. I've had so many stations <laughs> that I've worked at. Uh, now, I let remember... Me, let me just think for a second and go back. Uh, hold on just a second. No, that's all right. No, no, I, now, I remember because I, we were on a listing trip, and I was with my sister and my dad. And my oh, dad okay. Would, well, okay, we'll shoot to that. Then. Yeah, yeah, because my dad would actually go out. and that, Some of the best talent that was there, a lot of people had the best talent, but they didn't know how to get out of the middle of nowhere. So that's why my dad that's would go, right. he'd go on listening trips and he'd find talent like, like Dick. And then all of a sudden, you know, you're, you got this fantastic big voice at the big D. And a lot of the guys like Dick and a lot of them went off to other stations. And, and you know, uh, my dad always, you know, wished him, wished him well. And, but those are people that if he, if that particular talent didn't have the talent of maybe marketing themselves, he'd find them. He'd pick them out of nowhere, and next well, thing you yes, know, he has an unbelievable sense of talent. And we, I think, Dick, didn't you say that we that we had heard you, and then, but you had also sent the tape to the station? Oh, no, no. <clears throat> well, set me right up. I thought I was really on a roll there. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, what happened was uh, I, I was on the air. I was really pissed off because uh, the salesman. Does this sound familiar? The salesman screwed me out of my uh, talent fee. So I said to Bob Cohen, Lee Roberts, I said, I got to get out of here. Uh, can you tell me, you know, a good station that, that you think I could get into? And he said, yeah, I got a perfect one in Hartford, Connecticut. I said, I don't think I've ever been except on the way to New York. And he said, well, uh, let me get the telephone number. He got the phone number and I called and Charlie took the call right away, Charlie Parker, my, my dearest friend in radio, a uh, guy I learned more from than, than anybody. Anyway, um, uh, Charlie said, Dick McDonough, he said, I, I got you scheduled to, <laughs> to audition for me on Monday. I said, well, I didn't know anything about it. He said, well, no, I know you, I haven't called you yet. So he said, I don't have to call you. So talk about a coincidence. Yeah. I mean, so I ended up in, in, in Hartford, and uh, audition day came, and there was a, sh a guy who was uh, pissed off at his girlfriend, and he had a shotgun uh, at her head in the white hut right across the street. Oh, and yeah. That Remember that? Just, huh? Oh, the the uh, burger joint, right? The burger joint. Oh, my God. Oh, yeah. the White Tower. This yeah. is before uh, the gold building. Yeah, right, right. Yeah. So anyway, uh, I uh, lost my track here. No, so the guy, the guy had a shotgun. Oh, the guy had a gun, a shotgun, and, and his girlfriend's head. And Charlie and God bless his soul, uh, Walt Dibble, uh, rest in peace. What a good man he was. One of yeah. my biggest fan club mm -hmm. presidents. Mm -hmm. And anyway, he. Uh, he said, Dick, we can't uh, take it today because of, you know, what's going on. It was right across the street. And, you know, everything cordoned off. 
And uh, uh, so I, I said, well, when can you audition me? So I came back, uh, I think, the next day or whatever, it doesn't matter. But I, I, uh, I, I came back, and it was a hell of a drive. And uh, I got the job. I got the job. And what year was that? That was in 1968. Wow. wow. Big now, D was great too. in 68. <laughs> yeah. now, now, Dick, um, was it, was it um, a temporary? Was it that, did most radio stations actually want you to have uh, an audition, or how did that go? I mean, they, when you went for a job at a station, or did they? I well, mean, I already had a tape all, all set. Mm -hmm. And anybody that <clears throat> was a radio person had their best audition tape ready to ship off, ready to, to mail. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's, that's what, that was the protocol back then. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, the protocol, when I was uh, at WDRC, uh, I was in production, and your father told Steve Parker's father was Charlie Parker, the late Charlie Parker, great God one. Bless his soul. And uh, Dick, uh, his, his father said, he says, what I do is I listen to an audition tape. If it's good, then I'll bring them in here to, uh, to, to do the audition. And so that's how we, he, he did it. Well, it's funny. No, that was different, see. You, see yeah. you sent a tape, and if they were interested in you, you, you got the job. Right. But Charlie had one step further, and that was to have a live audition. A brutal live audition. Yeah. Oh, my God, you know. Like, uh, what, what I've was never it? had one before like that. Aero, yeah. Aero Stereo Tape Town? Or, um, oh my God, the Wonder was Bread. The, uh, well, did you read the Capaco spot? And then yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, Sigourney Street, and people would call it Sigourney Street. Oh, oh I know. And, that was a difficult one. Try to say it's not the college if you haven't lived around here yeah. before. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, Crazy, what, man. Yeah, what I used to do when I would, because I was the guy who would conduct the auditions. The guys would come into, the, into, the, into my control room, and i say, okay, here's the copy. Take as much time. You have any questions? Ask me. Well, a lot of the guys, the smart ones, did. No, I didn't ones. audition with you. I auditioned no. with Bob Coe. Yeah, yeah, yeah Bob right. Coe was yep, great. Yep, yep. Yeah, and so, um, uh, but when I took people, I, I spent, like Bob Marks, yep, yep. Uh, he, he auditioned with me, and I said to him, uh, you just um, get any, you know, uh, names or uh, pronunciations, let me know. Now, I told Charlie that, and he says, no, that's a good idea. Let's see if they're smart enough to ask your advice. And sure. So uh, the, quite a few didn't. And needless to say, they did not work at the Big D. Uh, I remember when uh, Jack uh, Tupper came in. Mm -hmm. He was Jack Morgan, J.M. and E.A.M. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, God. God yeah. rest his soul. Yeah. And Jack uh, asked me, he says, is this Capaco or Capaco? I said, uh -huh. Capaco. Is it Sigourney Street or Sigourney Street? Sigourney Street, you know? He was a smart guy. Oh, mm -hmm. brilliant. And he was a great guy to work with. Uh, His I really birthday enjoyed was the day it. before we uh, Charlie's. What's that? His birthday was uh, the day before Charlie Parker's. Oh. See, Dick yeah. knew, every, knew everybody's birthday. He knew, oh, yeah. their, he knew their sign. Oh, yeah. Their I still do. Big on yeah. the sign. Big yeah. on the sign. You, yeah. know, I would, you know, but Dick always gets mine wrong. Dick says I'm a Pisces, and I said, no, my sign is walk and don't walk. <laughs> yeah, no, so, I mean, just... Hey, thanks a lot. We'll be here all week. Um, well, you know what I always loved about the audition stuff and the air checks was when my, dad, when my dad would go in to clean the office, and he would say, because, I mean, it would be overflowing, but he'd take like a Sunday or something, okay, well, let's go clean the office. And while he cleaned every single audition tape that came in, I'd be putting it on the reel. And right away, he'd go, get rid of them. Get rid of him. Get rid of him. And then he'd go, you know, let, this, let this guy stay a little bit. And he'd listen to maybe more than a few breaks. And he'd go, okay, put him aside. Then we go back into it. Get rid of him. Get rid of him. But he always oh made He was always looking for that big D sound. So yes. he knew right away. Um, in fact, I remember, um, you know, there was just some people when they made the transition from the old format into going into rock and roll. Um, mm. he, he knew the sound that he wanted. And he, would, he spent a lot of time in Boston. He would listen to BZ and RKO. BZ, sure. Yep. And people would sometimes say, you know, DRC was like a little BZ because he knew the sound that he wanted. And, and he was very good friends with Jefferson K. Oh, really? Who was my idol. Yep, yep. But you know, oh, one of my idols. Oh, yeah. my God. And you know something? It was all about 
a certain sound. But he, and one now, Len Thomas. Okay, this Ooh. is a true story. Len Thomas um, had been out on the Cape for years. Mm-hmm. So one day, my dad's driving on the Cape because we'd always go up there for you know a week or two in the summer. Mm-hmm. He's driving along and he's listening to this guy. Boy, that's and what he would do is if he heard somebody he liked, he'd immediately pull over to a, uh, a phone booth on the side of the road. He'd call the station. They'd say, well, you want to come to Big D? And so he called Len Thomas. He said, you want to you come to Big D? And he goes, I've been sending you tapes for years. <laughs> and he goes, you never, I never really knew your sound and your approach until yeah. I actually heard you on the air. Because sometimes, Dick, as you know, so many guys take the time to really try to polish up their air check and make it just right. For, and yeah. I remember... Um, uh, Billy Hart went on to Bill St. James, one of yeah. the biggest, one of the biggest voices in the country. Mm-hmm. Years ago, I said, you know, I, I'd really like to get into voice work. Can I, can I send you a? He says, make up a demo, send it to me. So I, I go to, I go to a big production studio and I make up this terrific demo. I send mm-hmm. it to him. He goes, don't forget the Everyman. I said, what? Don't forget what? The Everyman, the Everyman okay. voice. You know, the Everyman voice. Well, as it turned out, I'd been at Channel 8 for many, many, many years. They hired me at Channel 8 because I do the everyman voice. It was the only thing I didn't put on my demo. <laughs> i got to put that on there. But, you know, it was, it was finding a sound, like with you, Dick, and also knowing that when they got to that point, some of the guys went on to, you know, all kinds of different markets. And it really came down to watching them fly. My, oh, dad, yeah. my dad never tried to clip anybody's wings or hold them back when a guy would get a job in another market or maybe even a bigger job. He'd go, and he would love, he'd love to hear him on other stations, and he'd go, oh, geez, that's great. I think Mike Taylor was one of the few that never, no, he did send him a tape, because I heard his, his tape. I thought he had hired him right, right out of HYN. But, Mike uh, Taylor, it's still the best job he ever had. He actually, Dick, you'd love this. Mike Taylor went out and has on his arm, tattooed, just like you see there in the picture, mm-hmm. the WDRC microphone. He showed it to me, he came to one of our reunions, and he said, you don't know who I am, do you? I said, no. He rolls up his sleeve, and he had the biggest microphone. He goes, it's the best place I ever worked. And that's why that's he put the great. tattoo on there. Yeah. yeah. yeah what dear. a compliment. Of course, I didn't ask him to you know, pull up his other sleeve. Who knows? <laughs> 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 it was just that one arm. He could have had, you know, HYN could be on his thigh for all I okay. <laughs> And Rosie on my left. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> what, was the most, what was the most difficult day you had at DRC? Um, working um, contest. I, let me rephrase that. What was the worst, the most difficult contest you had to deal with at DRC? Oh, boy, I don't know. I, <clears throat> that's something I, I, I auditioned. You know, I, I would uh, go over it with somebody else mm-hmm. before I did, did the contest because there's usually a, quite a bit of money uh-huh. involved back in those days. Yeah. And you didn't want to screw up. I didn't want to screw up. And uh, so I would rehearse it and then do it. Well, you had, and, you had some f- good fans. You had one in particular. Oh, uh, Bert with Stepikoff. Hi, Dick. How are you? Hey, baby. <laughs> hey, baby. Hi, Dick. Yeah. I, I got a great outtake of you <clears throat> talking to her on the phone. We, you weren't <laughs> on the air, but and you were talking. Where do you get that sexy voice, Bert? <laughs> Yeah. Do you smoke? You know, you, do you recommend kids smoking? You know? <laughs> and a, a pack of Luckies right here in my purse. Yeah. No, she just she just had that unique voice, and uh, Bertha Stefikoff. Uh, oh, she, she was great. Yeah, she was helped make the show. Now, know? Dick, were you there at the station when they did? I think you may have already gone um, when they did the uh, Thanksgiving birds promotion. Oh no, I was there. Wasn't oh, that yeah. insane? Oh, that was, was insane. insane. You know, somebody just gave me. I should send it to you, Dick. Um, somebody had held on to the four-page, single-spaced memo that went to every guy that was on the air. And I remember right on at the top of it, he goes, you know, think Orson Welles. Think War of the Worlds. And he oh, goes, yes. you cannot, I mean, he wrote out all the ad libs. It was perfect. He ran a 24-7, but he would made it very clear that no one should know. Well, funny thing, I didn't know about it. Jim English didn't know about it. He was our music director. Mm-hmm. And... They were saying, the birds are now coming over Hartford. <laughs> Jim ran into, you guys had a little office area. And, yeah. and I rolled, pushed the window, and Jim and I are looking up like a bunch of idiots, looking for the birds. And Charlie comes by the, by the office and says, what are you doing? I says, we're looking for the birds. He says, he says, you guys are idiots. It's a hoax. 
I go, what? <laughs> he says, get, shut the window and get in here and I'll talk, tell you about it. Oh, sure. I know. My sister, my sister Kathy was saying to my dad, you really, you, we got to go downtown. We got to get up on the roof. I'm going to bring yeah. the camera. I want to see when the birds are right. <laughs> and, you know, it was so oh, funny Kathy. because I was, uh, was there when, you know, when they announced that the birds were there. And mm -hmm. I was on the phones. And some guy called up and said he was from the FCC, and I hung up on him. My father goes, you hung up on the FCC? <laughs> I said, I couldn't have, been, couldn't have really been the FCC. But, yeah, uh -huh. those, those were the things, though, that I think what really made it fun. And I think, Dick, you'd agree, I'm sure, because most guys have. You didn't work for Charlie Parker. You worked with Charlie Parker. That's and right. All of the guys, really, when I call them all my big D brothers, yeah. it's because they were like family. And they yeah. treated us like that, too. Yeah. yeah. Oh, oh, absolutely. God. Absolutely. Uh, the... Um, Charlie was the best. Yeah, he, he never took, uh, took credit for anything that somebody else did or uh, yes. produced well, something. That's true. You know, and if they got credit, or if he got credit for something they do, he would correct them and say, no, no, yes. this was done by this person yep. or that yep. person. Yep. You know? Yeah, uh, no, yeah. he was too And if somebody, soul. if somebody ripped them off, if somebody else took it, like a station down the street across right next to him. Oh, my God, P.O.P. And would still yep. all, all. And he never let it bother him. He says, I move on to something else. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Just go on to the it next. It made him better that way. Yeah. <clears throat> well, yeah, it was that challenge. Yeah. yeah. When you, yeah. Where did you go when you left WDRC? To New Haven. Where? Oh. At ELI. ELI. New ELI. Haven. Okay. I, service station like T.I. Like so it's kind yeah, of the T.I.C. Yeah. Hard. Yeah, I thought you went to Kansas and then ELI, but you went right to ELI. No, I, I, no, I ended up, uh, let me correct your, your map of me. Uh, <laughs> I went from ELI, I was there five years, and I had tremendous uh, surgeries and, mm. and, and oh. time off. I was off two and a half years <clears throat> total of five years, wow. and they paid me the whole time. Wow! Wow! I mean, I, that was a god, god, to, God's grace. Yeah. So anyway, with that, uh, after that, I had gone through a divorce, mm -hmm. and my kids had moved to Florida. When I was, uh, you know, getting better in the hospital. <clears throat> and two or three months later, I went to Florida. Oh, okay. And I was there for two years, and then I went to Boston and uh, to Magic. And did oh, mornings. Yeah. Oh, oh, wow! Great station. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. And number one back then. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I went out to Kansas City. Yeah. How long were you there? Kansas City. Yeah. Five years. Wow. And then eventually you, uh, you ended up at uh, MAS, right? Up in Springfield? I, yeah, exactly. Um, I left uh, Kansas City because they weren't doing any more contracts. Oh, okay. And I didn't want to get stuck out there you know, okay. in the yeah. middle of the country yeah. Yeah. with yeah. no contracts. Yeah. So I left and I got a job at MAS. How long were you Tom at? Tom Holt was uh, the program director. Yeah. How long were you at uh, MAS? 18 years. You know, wow. I mean, he, he owned Springfield and did, you know, just, just I did, yeah. every, everybody. Plus, they could still pick him up in Hartford. Yeah. You know? Yes, yes, yeah. thank yeah. God. And how many times people go, whatever happened to Dick McDonough? You know, and I, I tell them, you're still at that same uh, self-serve gas station. And they, uh, you know, you ever hear that? You know, or do you want yeah. fries with that? He's famous for, do you want fries with that? No, um, but I'll tell you something, though, Dick. Seriously, people still, oh, the Prince, Dick McDonough. Really? You know, and when you go back, and it's funny, too, because when we were putting together uh, this whole thing and trying to do the 100th anniversary, yeah. um, and I did speak to the guy that owns the place now, and I tried to explain to him what this station meant to the market, what it meant to people growing up here, and how it was, well, highly respected all over the country and some of the most incredible talent. And I have to tell you, after I spoke to him a few minutes, that's why we're doing so much of it this way. Because he didn't understand or appreciate what DRC had been. And I just said, he just didn't get it. And I just said, you know, it's, there was a special time, but also I think a lot of it came down to the fact that the people who owned it back then, um, they, it wasn't always about, yeah, there was budgets from time to time for content. Sure. Sometimes it would be a budget. But even when there was no budget, that's when creativity had to come yeah. in. That's yeah, when exactly. my, my dad would say, okay, we have no money? Okay. You know. What... Uh I remember you guys doing, when I first started there, it was part-time, and uh, you guys were doing a promotion, and we were doing motorcycle on ice. Oh, no. the Hondas. Yes, 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 yes. Those mini bikes, yeah. Mini South Windsor. 
Yep. Yeah. And in the, uh, skate, the skating rink. Yeah. yeah. And exactly. And I, I, uh, I uh, teamed up with uh, Bill Hart. Oh, yes, 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 yes. And, and anyway, we were really beating everybody uh, on the bikes. And I said, let's, let's you know, let's do some showbiz here mm. and make it interesting for the uh, for the people who are here viewing. Now, didn't you fall? Didn't you guys fall? Well, yeah. Well, so he zapped the thing, <laughs> and we went up in the air, <laughs> oh, and the thing came down the the the, the bike, and uh, and Bill, oh, and then I was on the ice. Oh my, oh, my God. God! And poor Charlie got. If he didn't have a heart attack then, he was working on one. And that's where they came up with that, you know, McDonough on the ice. Oh, it's McDonough on the ice. <laughs> yeah. You know, and it's, it's funny, too, because you mentioned uh, Billy Hart back then. And, and Billy Hart, I remember my dad hired him right out of... Uh, high school. Right out of high school, out of yeah. Hall High. Yeah. Yeah. And um, because he had this tremendous set of pipes. But oh, see, yeah. you could have that great voice, but if you didn't know how to play it, if you didn't know You're how to play the it. instrument... It was no good. I mean, that's why he used to work out with me a lot. Bill, Bill uh, hung out with me. In fact, we were so close. I was his best man. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. And I, may I say, they're still married. Yeah. 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 yeah which is yeah. great. Yeah. I remember when he would show up every now and then when he was out with Boom Boom Cannon. Yeah. Oh my oh, God. Boom Boom. Yeah. And and Boom Boom Cannon was about twice the size of Bill, and Bill had these big glasses and the curly hair. Yes, <laughs> so that, very well said. But yeah. what, a, what a voice, what yeah. a voice. He, what um, a voice, and, you know, yeah. and he had the talent to go with it, too. Oh. Speaking, yeah. of, uh, speaking of Bill Hart and Dick McDonough, you remember the day you guys were um, uh, on the air together? You were on the AM side. I was working with you on the AM, AM side. Bill was on the FM side, and... We were running a contest, uh, Horn uh -huh. Hatchback and Big D. Remember that? Oh. Don't say hello. What say was it hi. again? Yeah. Uh, don't say hello. Say Horn and Hatchback and Big D. Big okay. D. Yeah, sure. So we would have on the log the... Um, which, is the which is the way the, you the Yeah, the program log, yeah, yeah. and it would tell you run contest, <clears throat> you know? And it was always at 10 past the hour. Uh-huh. So... All of a sudden, I'm in the in the room, and you're running your contest. Bill's running his. I have nothing to do with what Bill's doing over there. And then you get a winner. You got a winner, and I'm re we're recording it, and you're all excited. And then the bell goes off, and Bill saying Bill Hart has a winner too. <laughs> <laughs> and Charlie comes flying in. Tell him, I we got a winner. He's he's listening to Hart. He's not listening to you. But course, oh. but the general manager was listening to you. He yeah. comes flying in. We got a winner. Oh, it's great because that was of course. Yeah, and yeah. and we gave away two cars. And I told him, I says, yeah. I says, you got two cars to give away. And he goes, what? What do you mean? What do you mean? I says, we. I says, Bill uh, Bill Hart just got a winner, and Dick uh, McDonough got a winner. Isn't that and he just was, he went eight, he just went out, sure. you know, and it was hysterical, and poor guy, and they had to give away two cars. <laughs> and back then, yeah. you really gave away a car. Oh, yeah. Because these, did, day, yeah. these, these days, thing. yeah, these days they would do things like, you know, win, win the lease of a new car for yeah. a year or something. It was never yeah, yeah. Or, or win a car, but the insurance company would pay for it. You'd buy the yeah. By the, the, the contest. Yeah, the, the insurance. insurance group. Yeah. Now, what about, um, Dick, were you around for Get Your Hands on a Toyota? Oh, yeah. Like, oh, no, I, yeah, I, I was there for the first one. Yeah, oh. yeah. I, and, uh, you know, and, and, and the next one, too, when the gas was coming out of the car. Oh! <laughs> and I, and I, I, I noticed that, and I said, get Charlie quickly for yeah, yeah. So, We're going to blow up. <laughs> I, I said, Charlie, there's a leak. Over there, look, it's gasoline. Oh, my God. Oh, and, you know, all these people. Back then, people were smoking. Oh, yeah. boy. You know, out, out. And it was, uh, it was yeah. not a big deal. And But smoking with gasoline. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my Christ. Well, you know, that also, um, when, when that first year was so successful, and it was yeah. all over the country, because it came down to, I think, Fred Tizzoli, I think, was a salesman, and he... Went into mm -hmm. my dad's office and said, I, I need a promotion for Lynch Toyota without missing a beat because it was their slug line back then. He goes, 
Get your hands on a Toyota and never let go. Yeah. Well, and that's how they came up with the uh, Lynch Toyota. It was perfect. I didn't know that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. I was in that meeting and and I started laughing and uh, and Fred School was fine. I said, imagine some guy running around, hanging on a car, a new car going, down, <laughs> and and your father's sitting there and he just he's not laughing. He's just thinking. He goes. You know, we could do that. Put yep. your hand on a toy and yep. never let go. We'll do it as a car is parked as a marathon. And, and that, was, oh, uh, that was my first promotion with, uh, with I was with, the DR, <laughs> with WDRC maybe, what, three weeks. But, and, you know, uh -huh. the, the big thing about it was when the next year, the salesman, who you have to love with all your heart, they said, let's do another one. My dad goes, no. Oh, yeah, we got to do it again, Charlie. He goes, no, he did not want to do that second one. Well, he was because, smart. Because everything went so well with the first one. However, would, that's because a lot of people didn't know what was going to happen. So when it came around a second time, the Board of Health wanted to make sure everything was okay. All these yeah. laws and rules and everything. Oh, it was terrible. You know? yeah, and that was the debut of the first one, was the debut of Studio uh, D. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah and well, I'll tell you when the Studio D uh, premiered, and that was at West Farms Mall. When no, no, it was that. It was I that, did the first show there. Uh, well, it wasn't the um, Foodathon, was it? Yeah, I, I think that began. Yes, it was. Yeah. Well, the Foodathon I thought was in February, and I'm pretty sure the uh, Mobile Studio D was that the Lynch Toyota was the uh, first. Really, first time. Well, well I, I beg to differ with you because I, I was there, and we ended up at West Farms doing the Feet of Friend. He's he's the prince. Well, he's, I, I, he's, he's, I was there. It was only, what, 50 years ago? He's, he's the prince. Yeah, exactly. I, I, Never yeah, I could question <laughs> the prince. I learned that the hard way You're years ago. <laughs> yep. I was at the Manchester Parquet doing a scavenger hunt, and I oh. found out then that you didn't question ever, no matter what. He could be totally wrong, but you never question. Never once you question the prince. So move on. <laughs> Move on. <laughs> yeah, so oh, we, we didn't okay. edit all this out later. It won't be a problem. Yeah, I know. I'll make it look like I, <laughs> I, I did it. So, but um, you know, it's um, it's it's great having you on with us, uh, Dick. And thank you for your waiting an hour. Uh, well, it was a pleasure, really. Yeah, uh, as it's I nice was to hear uh, Steve Parker's stomach getting hungry. Yeah, <laughs> it's wonderful. Yeah. No, that's well, his nerves. Well, yeah. Hi, Angie. Hi, Angie. Oh yeah, girl. she's waiting for me. Um, no, um, Dick. No, she's waiting for me. <laughs> you know, but but Dick, you have to admit, and I always say this. You know, your voice hasn't changed through the years, and I always say it's Y dash E A R S. The great thing about it is with with radio. I mean, you still hear cousin Brucey out there and Dickie Robinson doing his thing. Because uh -huh. when yeah. you get on the mic. It doesn't change. The age doesn't change. The resonance is there. And I know, nobody, I mean, women used to, I guess we could say quiver. Can we say quiver? Women would put their radio very close to them and then quiver because of Dick's voice. The pipes. Oh, my God. It I had a tremendous female following. Big female following. That's yeah. why oh, when he went to. Probably that's, more women than men. Oh, definitely, yeah. And that's why when you went to MAS, when they were doing that, that format, you know, they were doing middays over there instantly. The women always, always. Was tremendous. Yeah. What time, what, what, when were you on the air at, D, at uh, WDRC? There was a... Afternoon drive. There was a... Uh, uh, well, this is, talk about a compliment. <clears throat> or is it a compliment? By... I was... Um, I was at MAS in Springfield. And uh, the general manager's wife was a salesperson. And she told me this in confidence, which is, you know, now that's... I think it's run its time. It was about 15, 20 years ago. We're good. At least. <laughs> and, uh, Hold on. So, Statue of limitations done. Yeah. Well, I think it's, it's run out. It's run out. Just ran out. <laughs> anyway, this woman that owned the store, and she was very hot, I was told. And she, uh, but I was a good boy. I didn't look her up. Uh, she said, Dick McDonough. Could get my panties off with his voice. <laughs> oh, gee. You know, we have a family show here, Dick. No, that so. was it. No, but that's a plain fact of the matter. I yeah. mean, he could. I mean, it's just like you saw with Tom Jones and the, the bras and the panties up on the stage. Yeah, yeah, that type you know, of thing. Happened to me when I was cleaning West Farms. You know, yeah. just, but, <laughs> but you know, but the thing is, it was um, never. You know, Dick. There was never an ego. There was never. I mean, some guys um, really got caught up in their own press. 
And yes. I think uh, we saw some of the most creative guys, especially nighttime guys back then, when you had a million, million, and millions of, of teenagers yes. that were listening. And the teenagers just thought you walked on water. Oh, and yeah. Big difference between that nighttime and afternoon on DRC. Yeah, it, but when they got to the kids at night, and then what would happen is some of the guys, and I won't say any names, but some of them actually got carried away. In fact, I'm going to say a name. You know why? Why? Because I can do this. And Dick will appreciate it. Joe Hager. I was, th oh, I was just thinking of okay. Hager. Now, Joe Hager, Hager. You know, Joe Hager had a great nighttime following. He thought he oh, would yeah. do whatever he wanted to do. And, of yeah. course, he loved the band King Crimson, which really wasn't uh, a big band on Top 40 radio. No, but it was no. AM only. So one night, he decides, he made his own decision. I'm only going to play. <laughs> I'm just going to play 100% King Crimson. Mm -hmm. So my father's at home, and I still remember my sister and I at the kitchen table. My father you know, goes over, and he picks up the phone, calls the hotline. I know. I was there. Joe did not answer the phone. And when he didn't answer the phone, my father looked at my sister and I. Generally, he it, it ripped his guts out whenever he had to let somebody go. Sure. He looked at my sister, and he goes, I'll be back. I'm going to go fire a guy. Because he would not stand for insubordination. And he, oh, no. uh, he drove no. to the radio station. Nor I, guess, he. I think Paul Rep was uh, running master control then. Yes. And yeah. he, um, <laughs> yeah, he, I walked, was rest his soul. Yep, he walked into the uh, control room. He said, okay. When I walk into no, that. No, I, I was working master. Oh, you were? I was there. Yeah, I remember your dad walking in, and I'm trying to single. You weren't so, Paul Rep? Uh, no, I wasn't Paul okay. Rep. You know? And um, your father came in and walked out, called uh, Joe to his office. And but he, but, but before that, he gave instructions to the board op, which oh, yeah. was rep, yep. yeah. not to take him off the air, yep. but let yep. him do a show, yeah. yep. like he's doing the show. So, you know, he would think it was live. Because he, said, cause he yeah. said, you know, take him off, but when you do, flip it to the FM. So they That's didn't right. miss a beat, and the FM kept going. We did it on the hour. Like, we did it on the hour. That uh, was perfect. Yeah, and Joe was in there playing the song, and all of a sudden he's hearing, uh, I forgot who was, uh, was Holland? No, it wasn't Holland. It, uh, I don't know who was over on the, uh, on the other side. And then Joe knew, and that was it. Yep, he was gone. Yep. But was... Joe never disliked Charlie. He, no. He and in fairness respected. to Joe Hager, yeah. uh, huh? I remember when Joe was dying, he was in Florida. Yeah. And I kept in touch with him. And oh, we were on the phone, guy. and the week that he died, I talked to him every day, and we uh, we prayed. Yeah. So, and a lot of people wouldn't believe that, knowing Joe's reputation. Yeah. But it gives you a good, good idea of how people yeah. can change. Yeah. Yeah, and you, you know, hundred percent. Yeah, I think a lot of people um, really don't know what a what in a way it's a big business, and another way it's a small business, and the relationships yeah. you make along the way. Oh they, yeah. They, I mean, even guys like you know, like Dave was saying. I mean, guys that. My dad had to, you know, say goodbye to. Sometimes it wasn't even, many times it wasn't my dad's decision. We had a guy in the corner office, but that's another show for another day. That's um, right, I understand. But in many cases, he would have to do it. It ripped his guts out. But all of them, pretty much everyone, after my dad wasn't there anymore, and he was like off in his world, if he had been retired for a while, and mm -hmm. they'd never forget. They'd call. Mm -hmm. How you doing, Charlie? And even the general manager of the radio station, Dick Corson, as much as they had their disagreements, he would be calling my dad all the time, and he'd be saying, Chaz, got an idea for like a TV show or something. And even when he passed away, and everybody was like, you know, they would all have different you know, comments about him. And my dad never had anything negative, never. Even though he, he there, were times, there were times when they would lock horns, but he never would. You know, the press was there. They wanted, nope. I mean, it was just, you know. And that, was, that said a lot, you know, about, you know, he always remained true to the station, and true to his guys, because that right. would, oh my God, it was such, I, and the other thing, and then just real quick, he would take as much time spending, talking, like Robinson's like this, spend as much time talking to the guy who was the CEO of Travelers as the guy who was cleaning the radio station that night. Yeah. Same amount That's of time. Right. Same. Yeah. And he never would put total phone on his telephone. He would never have another line. I said, Dad, I'm trying to call you, it's busy all the time. He goes. It's 100% when I have somebody on the phone with me. Nothing else mm -hmm. is more important. Good for him. That was his yeah. time. Yeah. God bless him. Andy, do we have uh, uh, a 
Well, I, got to, I want to say one thing. Sure, go ahead. Before we close off, the general manager who, who you were uh, discussing and yep, yep. so forth, and yep, when yep. people bring up his name, and they do so often, uh, they, uh, you know, they say negative things about the guy. And a lot of them are deserved. Yep, yep. But just the same, they would be very negative about him. And mm-hmm. I was screwed by him out of thousands of dollars. And I must say, thanks, thank God for my spiritual condition yep. that I was able to never say a bad word about that guy. Yeah. Uh, yep. People would really try to bait me and, and, you know, and say, you know, come on, <laughs> you know, look what he did to you. And, and uh, I said, forget about it. He, yep, treated, yep. he well, treated me fine when I left. I know that. The past well, is the past. Yeah, yeah well, he yeah. was... Um, he was uh, he was a unique person, and I will say that one time he was worried that one of the one, a talent was leaving, and he was yeah. afraid he wasn't going to get the money back that he had lent to the guy, like a thousand dollars or something. Oh. The guy went to the bank, all singles, went to his or- his office, opened up the bag, emptied a thousand dollars in ones all over his office, walked oh out, my gosh. and there he is crawling around on his hands and knees counting the money. <laughs> True story. Funny. True story, but. Yeah, I think, um, but it all came down to the fact that we were all friends, and I think having somebody in that building, in the office, that can make everybody go, uh, it just added to to the atmosphere. And and, and I think the major thing was respect for one another. Always. We were a family. We were a family. Everybody, I mean, we actually socialized together sometimes. Yeah. And it, it, uh, when I left, and I'm sure when you left, we lost a lot of that. Yeah, and uh, yeah, and it, that's the part I miss. I miss yeah. that camaraderie that we all. Had. And you know, you can't describe what we had. Hopefully, we're we're letting people know by what you're doing uh, during this big D radiothon. Um, but you can't describe it. You can describe it, but you can't really live it yep. Yep. unless yep. you were there. Yep. Yeah. And a lot of people don't understand that because radio has changed. Mm. So you know, a hundred percent. Uh, there aren't the Bruce Bradleys or Jeff Kays or Alan Freed's that I used yeah. to listen to, these guys, and they were my idols. Mm-hmm. And I would learn from them. Not copy them, but learn from them. Yeah. yeah. And uh, it was just, you know, radio's changed. And plus, you guys, Dick, I mean, you guys were true personalities. And that was back well, at the time. That's true, the, exactly. The kids would wait outside the station. The kids oh, would wait. It was incredible. And they couldn't wait to meet guys like Dick and just. You know, be around them. Yeah. And, it was uh, incredible. Yep, yep. They were big yeah. time, big time. If they're going to make an appearance, people came because of them. And, you know, it, in fact, it even got to the point where, you know, it was just like, it changed so much where people, I think what it was too, and I, I'm not going to hold you, Dick, because I know you got stuff going on, but I do know that um, when a man named Drake came out and he came up yes. with, the, with the Drake format, which was, you know, more music. Time, and, tune, and temperature. And that was people, it. people didn't understand. He didn't under, They didn't understand that radio wasn't just about the music. It was always about personalities and personalities yeah. like Dick McDonough. They listened because they wanted to hear what the guy was about. They wanted to know. But I will say one thing. What's that? He'd never have a guy get into his family on the air. He wouldn't get into talking about kids or about wife or anything else mm-hmm. because he believed in the illusion. And he believed that in someone they wanted to, they wanted to, you didn't want to know John Lennon was married. I mean, you wanted to, I mean, you, you, you guys were so much bigger than life. It was yeah, like, you know, you know, and it wasn't anything other than the fact of just keeping that illusion, you know, that you were there strictly for the listener. It's like but even no. now, Dick, can you, can you believe that, that people actually tell on the radio are telling people what they saw on television the night before? Or what they're going to see on television today. Because yeah. no. if you're true to the radio station, you've got to listen to what we're doing tonight at 11 o'clock. That's right. right. Yeah. 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 How, yeah. Is, how has radio changed, both uh, technically or operationally? Well, technically, and, I think it's better. You do? No question about it. Oh, yeah. A lot yeah. Of how about operationally? You know, but really. as far as talent goes, uh, unless you go to a serious XM and then you've got to got to search that out, yep, too. Yep, yeah. yep, There's a guy that does mornings on the, the 60s channel, yeah. Flash Phelps, and he is excellent. He reminds me of, uh, without dating, without sounding dated, he reminds me of the personalities that Big D had. Oh, wow. And Charlie would scoop him up in a second. 
Yeah. Because uh, he was, he, he's that good. And he's on now. Wow. But Flash guess, Phelps. A guy named... And there aren't too many of those people. You know, you can't, with a name like Flash Phelps, you can't really be anywhere else but in radio. Yeah. <laughs> no. And it's funny because when I, when I finally, Dave helped me a lot when I first wanted to get onto the air. And mm-hmm. they, would, they would set up the studio. He'd go home because I'd be going over there like midnight or after. And he'd set me up so I could go in and, and do stuff. And then he could critique it the next day. Mm-hmm. And it was so funny because when I finally had the chance to go on the radio, part-time overnights, kiss like in the 1980s. And my dad was, you know, pretty much out of the business then. And, uh, but he never stopped critiquing. So I said, so, Dad, I'm going on the radio. Can't wait to have my radio. Of course, he had come up, you know, with guys like, you know, Kent Clark, because Clark Kenny looked like Clark Kenny. He's Ken Clark, you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, exactly. Yep, Sandy Beach. As much as Kent hated that. Yeah, <laughs> Sandy Beach. All these guys with great names. So I said, so, Dad, what do you think I should use for my radio name? He says, I gave it to you when you were born. I went up to Steve Parker. <laughs> <laughs> and, about, I mean, if anybody best, ever knew, best, uh, if Dick McDonough's real name. No, 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 no. You are, you are Dick McDonough, aren't you? Oh, no, 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 no. He's the prince. He's the, He's the prince. One of the best radio names that Charlie came up with was Sandy Beach. Exactly. And now there's and a Sandy Dave Beach in almost Don every Solis market. Was his real name. Yeah. What was it? thought that. What was his name? Don Pasola. That's right, that's right. He's from Lunenburg, Massachusetts, which is about five miles away from Fitchburg, where I'm yep. from. Oh, wow. And that was we just... had some great people. Jack Miller, who oh, yeah. went on to CBS. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, he was there. And... Pete Sullivan. Oh. The late Pete Sullivan. He was, yep. you know, he was good, of course. Yeah, Jack Ron Cumple, Landry. Jack Morgan. Of course, you know, yeah, Ron Landry. The late yeah. Ron Landry. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, we lost a lot of... Well, Richard, we hate to see you go, but we're going to go. But before you leave, we're going to, we're going to close with the sound of The Prince. So roll it, Andy. Thanks, Dick. WDRC, Hartford.